we can't just depend on business as usual. Increasingly, it's becoming clear that we can't just continue to exchange natural capital for, for industrial capital. We have to find a way to manage our resources in a way that preserves the way of life that we've come accustomed to here. Watershed groups in New Brunswick are incredible. A local community group brings a perspective that's very important when developing good environmental management plans, and it's the watershed organization that empowers that community and ensures that their voice is heard when decisions are being made about how land and other resources are being used. Today we're, we're on the, the banks of Campbell Creek here and we're looking at aquatic bugs and we're looking at these insects today to help us learn about the water quality in this particular creek. The insects can tell us some interesting things that the regular chemical data wouldn't tell us. It can give us information on climate change, possible uh, invasive species, contaminants that might not be detected because when you sample for your, your water quality it's a once off, once a month. Whereas the insects are living in the water all the time. The field work component involves us getting in the water and we do a very vigorous sampling and we use a kick net. So we're vigorously kicking trying to get all that stuff under the rocks. It ends up in the net and we take these samples and we deliver them to the entomologist who looks at the abundance and the diversity of the species and that tells us a lot about the water quality in the river. Just upstream of where we're sampling, there's a massive 100-year-old-plus historic dam, and we are in the process of having that removed. We're working with a number of partners, and we're really excited about the project. It will create 27 kilometers of habitat for insects such as the one we're sampling, and of course for fish such as the endangered Atlantic salmon. Le projet ici qu'on présente, c'est ce qu'on appelle la barrière du 10 000 sur la rivière Northwest Upsalquitch. Donc, depuis les années 80, la province du Brunswick opère une barrière pour garder les saumons ici contre le braconnage. Donc, le projet est d'installer une barrière au début de saison, s'assurer que le saumon demeure ici jusqu'à la période de frais dans laquelle on se retrouve aujourd'hui, donc à la mi-octobre. Où est-ce que là, les saumons sont relâchés pour atteindre les zones de, de frais? Aujourd'hui, euh, on est euh, aussi euh, avec des partenaires du de ministère de Pêche aussi en Canada qui vont euh, tester des différentes caméras euh, sonores pour évaluer le nombre de saumons qui vont euh, pouvoir être captés par leur euh, caméra. Donc, euh, c'est c'est un des objectifs aussi de notre organisation de participer au développement d'outils technologiques pour améliorer la gestion du saumon et les décomptes. La résultante du, du projet, c'est d'avoir pu maintenir jusqu'à au minimum de 650 saumons ici, là, suite au décompte qui a eu lieu en apnée à la mi-septembre. Donc, on peut être fier d'avoir pu garder les saumons ici jusqu'à la dernière minute avant la, la frais. Donc, aujourd'hui, avec l'ouverture du barrage, les saumons vont pouvoir rejoindre leur zone de frais. Donc, on a atteint nos objectifs pour cette année. Le bassin versant couvre environ 400 km et est composé de deux tributaires, la rivière Chediac et la rivière Skedou, ainsi que plusieurs petits tributaires le long de la côte. La baie de Chediac est sur le détroit Northumberland. Le projet que nous allons présenter aujourd'hui, c'est notre suivi de la qualité d'eau. Chaque mois, nous prenons des échantillons d'eau dans les rivières Skedou et Chediac, ainsi que dans plusieurs petits tributaires le long de la côte. Avec ces échantillons, on analyse les bactéries, les nutriments, ainsi que des paramètres tels que la température puis l'oxygène dissous. Quand on y va sur le terrain, on amène avec nous autres ce qu'on appelle un YSI. C'est une sonde avec plusieurs capteurs 
qui peuvent prendre la température de l'eau, l'oxygène des sous et la conductivité. Ensuite, on va prendre une bouteille d'eau qu'on va amener dans le laboratoire pour faire analyser pour les différents nutriments puis les bactéries qui se trouvent dans l'eau ainsi que les métaux. Avec le test des qualités d'eau, ce qu'on fait, c'est que ça permet de déterminer quelle rivière est en meilleure santé que d'autres. Puis les, les rivières où on voit certaines problématiques, que ce soit trop de nutriments ou trop de bactéries, on va aller les étudier plus en détail ou essayer de trouver des projets qu'on peut faire pour améliorer la qualité de l'eau. So what we're doing today is we're actually looking for uh, the invasive aquatic plant known as Eurasian water milfoil. It was introduced here and it's now starting to thrive within the Kennebec cases. We want to see how much of it's here, how much abundance is there, so that we can start to put together a management plan on, you know, how can we better educate people as to what to expect with this and how we can adapt moving forward to the presence of Eurasian water milfoil. Once we see a spot with Eurasian water milfoil, we take a GPS, we tag it, we grab a sample. It's as simple as putting the sample in a Ziploc bag. We take that bag to a lab. Dr. Megan Bruce at UMB does our identification for us. And what we're trying to do now is generate some GIS mapping layers that we can use as part of our education and our management development as we move forward. Well, Eurasian water milfoil, because it is so aggressive and it grows in thick, heavy mats, is actually going to change your overall ecosystem balance. And that's going to have an impact on your fish assemblage, your biodiversity, and other aquatic plants as well. And our job at the Kennebec Case Watershed Restoration Committee is to try to keep that stuff in balance and maintain that healthy, natural ecosystem. So the project we're out here doing today is our Harbour Baseline project, which is looking at fish communities in the St. John Harbour, uh, along with some water quality monitoring and sediment monitoring. So today we're doing our fishing portion of the project. So we go out monthly to sites throughout the St. John Harbour and some of the tributaries that feed into the harbour. And we set two sets of nets. So we set a fike net, which stays out for 24 hours, and that catches larger fish. And then we also do a three minute beach seine. So we haul that net behind us in the water for three minutes, and then we will bring that ashore and we'll look at the fish that we've caught. We'll identify them, we'll measure how long they are, and then we set them back into the harbor. So we're collecting data that can be used in the future for different projects. It can also be used to track changes, whether that's improvements or decline in fish populations. It really serves as this time shot now before anything happens, good or bad, uh, to be able to use that into future studies. In our travels around New Brunswick, it's become clear that I'm part of a, a network of dedicated professionals who are working hard every day because they believe in the work, they love the province of New Brunswick, and uh, they're passionate about uh, both their organizations and more importantly, their communities. Nobody's in it for the wrong reasons. You know, these are people who come to work every day to make a real difference in their community, work hard, and show the best of what New Brunswick has to offer. These are places in communities in New Brunswick that could use maybe a, a little more support. And in many cases, it's already there. The work that these groups are doing around the province is worthwhile and is worthy of being highlighted and uh, really celebrated. So with a little bit of a push and uh, make sure that everyone's aware of these groups, I think that uh, it can be a real positive benefit to communities in New Brunswick in a time where they could really use it.